Why do microservices need Pivotal Cloud Cache? Pivotal Cloud Cache adds rock-solid performance and availability to applications built using microservices, fosters team autonomy, and provides a cost-effective approach to modernizing legacy systems. Pivotal Cloud Cache is an in-memory cache that provides high-performance access to data. Horizontal scalability allows for increasing capacity by adding servers to a cluster as and when needed. Microservice-based applications can have a large number of components. Pivotal Cloud Cache ensures continued access to data and resilience to server or availability zone failures. Minimizing team interdependence leads to faster software delivery cycles. Pivotal Cloud Cache encourages the use of best practices for increasing team autonomy. Teams can consume data based on their desired view of the data, adding flexibility with how team-specific requirements can be satisfied without adding complexity. Pivotal Cloud Cache creates an evolutionary path for changes to the data layer. Pivotal Cloud Cache provides an economic alternative to expensive data access from legacy systems. It protects investments in these legacy systems while allowing future investments to be focused on modern microservices-based architectures. Now let's go back and have a look at each of these areas in more detail. Mobile and web applications have exploded over the last decade, and there is no end in sight. More people are using apps, people are using more apps, and the average time consumed for using apps continues to increase. This increase in usage comes with expectations of real-time response, even during peak usage. In addition to user-initiated requests, applications are responding to requests from other applications or handling data that is being streamed in from sensors and monitors. Modern cloud-native applications have to stand up to all these increases in application usage. Lapses in performance are likely to add friction to customer touch points and cause a big decline in operational efficiency. Pivotal Cloud Cache uses in-memory technology which can perform multiple orders of magnitude faster. In this example, the time needed to read one megabyte of data is more than 100 times faster than disk. Even solid state storage only performs a mere fraction as fast as memory. Caching data in Pivotal Cloud Cache can handle a large number of concurrent requests for data and respond to these requests quickly with low latency. In addition to in-memory performance, modern cloud-native architectures have to be able to scale horizontally. Both the application logic and the data layer have to be able to scale horizontally. With Pivotal Cloud Cache, memory can be increased by adding servers as and when needed. The data is distributed across the servers so that when a request is made, it can be handled in parallel. When data is retrieved, each server operates only on its local data. This speeds up the response time to a fraction of the time it would take on a single server and boosts the overall throughput of the system. The system can handle more data and scale up predictably and linearly with the addition of servers. Pivotal Cloud Cache is also a key ingredient of the application logic's scalability and availability. Web applications have to scale elastically, survive crashes, and handle constant changes or reconfigurations to the underlying infrastructure, all without disrupting the user's session or losing data. Changes to an application's capacity can be intentional, based on a change in the application's performance needs, or a response to an unintentional failure somewhere in the application. Application containers are frequently created and destroyed and their average lifespan is decreasing down to days and even minutes. Cloud-native architectures need the type of elasticity that quickly goes from one instance of a microservice to 100 instances and then back down to one again. In this example, we see several instances being added to several microservices, showing how microservices can be scaled independently. This results in a whole new level of efficiency with respect to how IT capacity is used. But how can you prevent the negative impact on user experience and maintain business continuity with so many microservice instances being created and destroyed so often? The answer has to do with externalizing session state data. Session state data relates to each user's state and application interactions. This data has the lifespan that extends only to the end of each session. Having this state data saved externally, rather than embedded within the application, is critical to supporting the type of IT elasticity cloud-native applications need. Externalization of state information as a best practice is even part of the well-known 12-factor principles for building cloud-native applications. Session state caching is how users don't feel a big impact from changes to the underlying infrastructure. 
If any part of the infrastructure underneath the session becomes unavailable, the user interaction can still proceed without losing context. This happens because new microservice instances can be dynamically spun up to compensate for failures or to modify capacity, and these instances can be onboarded with the user's context from an external source that maintains state information. Having the state information available externally shields users from infrastructure changes by making it possible to provide good performance and availability despite these changes. Session state caching is vital to application scalability, business continuity, and user experience, which is why we are delivering it as a pre-configured option in Pivotal Cloud Cache. Putting session state information in Pivotal Cloud Cache makes this data accessible fast, highly scalable, and available. Using Pivotal Cloud Cache for session state caching minimizes the transition time across these change boundaries. Session state caching in Pivotal Cloud Cache was designed with ease of use by developers in mind. Developers can easily create a cluster with the session state caching option specified, and the caching service will be pre-configured for session state caching. Apart from session state data, Pivotal Cloud Cache is also used for caching application data across microservice instances. All instances can share a common, high-performance, scalable, and highly available cache for serving their common data access needs. Pivotal Cloud Cache can keep up with the workload generated by hundreds of instances of microservices. Caching layers are a key part of the infrastructure that supports modern applications, more of which are becoming mission critical. These applications are so central to the delivery of products and services that it's inconceivable how you would run the business without them. High availability is a requirement for cloud-native applications. Pivotal Cloud Cache replicates data across the cluster to achieve high availability. When data is updated on a member of the cluster, that data is also replicated to other members. Here we're showing two copies of data, but the number of copies is configurable. So what happens when there is a server failure? The workload is rerouted to an alternate server from which the required data can be accessed. The data is then rebalanced automatically to reflect the loss of a server. New copies are made for all the data that was lost so that the cluster continues to be highly available in case there is another failure. All of this is completely opaque to end users and the mechanisms for maintaining resilience are all automated and do not require any operator intervention. Note that each server is active. Each server has its own data, as well as replicated copies of data from other servers. And each server does useful work. There is no concept of a standby system that is idle, just in case of a failure. The same concept is applied to maintaining availability when availability zones fail. Availability zones often map to physical racks of servers. Data is replicated across these availability zones to provide an alternate path for accessing data in the event of a failure that impacts an entire availability zone. Similar to server failures, data is rebalanced after an availability zone failure. In addition, Pivotal Cloud Foundry recovers by starting new instances of the lost microservices in the surviving availability zones. Availability zones can be impacted by far-reaching failures that bring down an entire zone, like the loss of a rack's power supply or a network partition that makes an entire zone unavailable. If this happens, the workload is automatically routed to one of the surviving availability zones. Similar to any server in a cluster, availability zones are not just extra infrastructure components that are used only when a site failure occurs. Each application instance should be active and performing useful work under normal operation. The workload can be load balanced across different application instances in different availability zones within a region. Data can be sharded across availability zones and the partition key can be used as a mechanism for routing requests to the instance that has the data related to the request. This active-active configuration provides availability assurances related to site outages without the expense of a redundant infrastructure that is not being utilized under normal operation. The concept of availability zones permeates various layers of an application's infrastructure. Pivotal Cloud Foundry also has the concept of availability zones. Microservice instances are located in multiple availability zones so that their redundancy and distribution minimizes downtime during ongoing operations, product updates, and platform upgrades. 
Public infrastructure as a service vendors like Amazon Web Services also provide options for choosing availability zones for deploying application instances to locations that are fault tolerant from each other with high bandwidth connections between them. This support of the concept of availability zones across all the layers makes it possible to get the full benefit of high availability offered by availability zones. Microservice architectures inherently result in more components than monolithic applications. A single request initiated by the user can touch several components like distinct clusters, servers, network hops, and microservice instances. For example, consider an insurance application that uses a microservice to answer the question, what is my copay for this procedure if I go to the doctor tomorrow? The responding microservice would first look up the patient's policy by sending a request to the patient microservice. It would then have to look up the details of the policy by sending a request to the policy microservice. Other lookups that would be required are the coverage, provider, and procedure microservices. All of this would have to be composed to answer the copay query. So the overall application availability requires all these components to be available. A single failure has a ripple effect all the way up the chain across multiple paths. The overall availability of the system declines exponentially with the introduction of each additional point of failure. So even with highly reliable components, the combined reliability of the components can be quite poor. An additional challenge is introduced by the practice of treating microservice instances as ephemeral in cloud-native architectures. They are added and removed dynamically to adjust for the required capacity. Now imagine the impact across the application infrastructure if caching is utilized across various critical points in this topology. The overall application availability impact can be significant. Building applications using microservices allows teams to work autonomously from each other. Each team makes separate and independent decisions regarding their technology stack, and each microservice can have independent development, test, and production cycles. This autonomy produces huge payoffs with respect to team velocity. Teams can make changes quickly because these changes don't impact other teams. Removing dependencies between teams encourages a culture of continuous integration and continuous delivery, where there is an ongoing pipeline of software going through the system all the time. So what does the notion of autonomy mean when we apply it to the data layer? Let's have a look at some common practices and pitfalls. Here you see a common practice of sharing direct access to data. Each team and microservice has their own database, but they also share direct access to a shared database. This is a form of a dependency that limits team autonomy. Let's take a look at an example. In this case, the teams are updating the name field in the shared database. Both first name and last name are contained in the same name field. A new team comes along and wants to update and receive name information in two separate fields first name and last name. If we change the database schema, we have taken care of the new team, but this constitutes a breaking change for all the other teams, who are still depending on name information in a single field. All their updates no longer fit the new schema. The way around this is to coordinate the change across all teams. This requires teams to link up their development, test, and release schedules and coordinate their effort through the software release cycle. This is exactly the type of team interdependency that causes delays and slows down the delivery of software. An alternate approach and best practice is to prohibit direct access to data. Instead, have all data access occur via APIs. So the shared database essentially becomes a special class of microservice with API access that is dedicated to the task of providing access to data. We refer to these APIs as data APIs. These microservices and data APIs now have all the benefits of microservices and can be horizontally scaled, provide resilience, and versioned just like any other microservice. Data APIs project the data model and provide a single access point to the underlying data. As such, they also provide a point at which you can implement throttling, access control, perform logging, and enforce other policies. A data API provides a contract for accessing data. This allows more flexibility in how teams can expose the data to meet their needs. In our example, two versions of APIs are deployed in parallel. One version handles name as a single field, while the other version handles name in two separate fields for first name and last name. 
The second version can break up the name into separate fields as part of the microservices code. Data transformation code within the microservice can handle this change without any change to the backing store schema. Similarly, many transformations can be handled in this way without changing the backing store. This adds an added layer of flexibility where teams can receive their desired view of the data without disrupting other teams. Data APIs can also provide isolation from changes to the backing store. If and when the backing store schema is changed and versioned, a version of the API that projects the old schema can be retained for maintaining backward compatibility. Data APIs and versioning allow data access patterns to evolve through a process of gradual change. They loosen some of the tight coupling between the backing store schema and what the application expects. Adding pivotal cloud cache to a data API achieves some key benefits. PCC's in-memory, horizontally scalable architecture means that low latency, high throughput, highly available data access is now available to all the consuming microservices. Legacy systems based on legacy databases and middleware are pervasive and therefore have to be taken into consideration as part of an IT investment plan. Legacy monolithic applications are notorious for undermining team autonomy. With so many layers of functionality, these applications cause teams to be heavily dependent on each other. On the other hand, these legacy systems are all well entrenched and adequately satisfy many unchanging business requirements. Hence, it is not reasonable to undertake a wholesale replacement. In many cases, there is a justifiable reluctance to modify these systems because they are complex deployments and are easily disrupted with several points of failure. Apart from being brittle, legacy systems are expensive. Maintaining these systems is a constant drain from the IT budget, and adding capacity is costly. Examples of this include mainframe pricing based on MIPS, or the steep pricing for adding incremental capacity to relational databases. Both the cost and scalability limitations of legacy databases can be reduced by adding a caching layer. Most of the application's requests for data can be handled by the cache, reducing the frequency of access to the legacy database to a mere fraction of what it was. Pivotal Cloud Cache's high-performance, scalable, and highly available cache can replace the more expensive, less available, and slower form of accessing data via the legacy database. But how does one extend the functionality of these legacy systems? Fortunately, there is a way to extend legacy systems despite the fact that they are brittle and expensive. New microservices-based applications can be created around the edges of the legacy system without impacting existing workloads. Suppose you have a legacy ERP application and you want to build an e-commerce application. The e-commerce application can be built alongside using a modern microservices-based architecture. The e-commerce application will need inventory data and other important data from the ERP system, and this information can be streamed into the caching layer that is used by the e-commerce application. The new microservices will benefit from the low latency, high concurrency performance, and the event-driven architectures made possible by the caching layers. You can continue building around the edges or start carving out functionality from the legacy application and build more modern microservices to cover this functionality. This is known as the strangler pattern because it lets the new system slowly replace the legacy system until the legacy system is strangled and no longer needed. Building caching layers sourced from the legacy data stores provides a starting point for a new generation of microservices. These caching layers mediate between the legacy data store and the microservices that rely on each of the caches as their data layer. This evolutionary approach embraces legacy systems by protecting and extending investments in them. So in summary, Pivotal Cloud Cache's in-memory technology can offer up to two orders of magnitude faster performance than disk. Cloud Cache's horizontal scalability allows addition of capacity to meet performance needs with growing volumes of data. Pivotal Cloud Cache offers recovery from server or availability zone failures without any operator intervention. The recovery process protects against any data loss. Pivotal Cloud Cache increases team autonomy by providing a way to create team-specific views of data based on versioned APIs. This is an alternative to making changes that require coordination across all the teams and their schedules and team interdependencies that slow down team velocity. Pivotal Cloud Cache provides an easier way to scale or modify brittle and expensive backing stores. 
Visual Cloud Cache provides an on-ramp to a modern architecture 